Hello, this is Prophet Six, Family Prophet to the Angel, the Church to the Lay of the Sin. May the Most High bless you this Sabbath. Shalom to you all. Uh, we're going to get right into this Sabbath school lesson. Um, in just a moment. Pardon me. We're going to get right into this Sabbath school lesson right here. And I'm really trying to make these things a lot shorter, uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes, because all the time that uh, these Sunday school teachers and Sabbath school teachers uh, waste in Sabbath school for what it's worth and the good that it does to the people that come every Sunday and every Sabbath, these people don't know nothing after these Sabbath school lessons are over. Nothing. They, it, and I'll tell you. Have you ever heard anybody give a testimony about what they received from the Sabbath school lesson through it during the testimony service? Why is that not, not one of the things that is testified to? Because nobody's learning nothing. I mean, you're not studying the Bible anyway before you come to Sabbath school. So when you come to Sabbath school, you you for the most part um, sitting before a Sabbath school teacher for the most part, not in every single instance but for the most part you're sitting before a sabbath school teacher that's rehashing stuff that they learned in cradle roll that, come on really come on that's why you will never hear anybody give a testimony about what they learned in sabbath school lesson during a testimony service that's never on on that's never in the in the scheme of things as it relates to testimonies. But without further ado, we're going to get into the Sabbath school lesson. And the reason why I'm late up uploading this because I actually already recorded this last week, but I wasn't satisfied with what I was presenting, and it went an hour, and I didn't like that. So you, I really need to get right into the Sabbath school lesson. Now this is lesson eleven, Peter on the great controversy. Now. One of the scriptures that really stood out to me in the read for this week's study uh, is Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Now, you're not going to study this ever in any Sunday school or any Sabbath school. You're never going to. These things I'm about to bring to you, never going to go over these things. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to pick out the scripture that I know the devil is not going to it's going to hide during your Sabbath school lesson. And that scripture is Deuteronomy 14.2. Let's look at it. Deuteronomy 14.2. Deuteronomy 14.2. Now, you want an amazing fact? Here's the Deuteronomy 14.2. Now, this is a scripture that Christianity, this monster called Christianity, hates. It hates scriptures like this. Deuteronomy 14, 2. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Woo! That are upon the earth, not face of the earth, but upon the earth. Now, what holy nation is he talking about? Who is this holy people? Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. We want to see who is this talking about. Is this talking about Chinese, Japanese? Is it talking about uh, uh, Australians? Is it talking about uh, uh, Germans? Who, who, who is this holy people that's above all people that's upon the face of the earth? Who is this people? And and is there such thing as a, a group of people that's above everybody else? Because you know what Christianity teach. There's no big eyes and little U's. Yes, there is. Here we go. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. It don't say the whole world, y'all. It don't say the whole world. It says, these be the words which... Which Moses spake unto all Israel. So who then is the top nation above all nations on the face of the earth? It is Israelites. They are the top 
people on earth. They are the kings and priests on earth. Nobody else can be king. Or, no other nation of people can be kings and priests on earth. And if there can be a group of people that can be that in place of Israel, you got to show me that from scripture. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel on this side of Jordan in the wilderness, in the plain over against the Red Sea. So this is clearly talking about the children of Israel. Okay, you don't believe me. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. Let's go to Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 and 2. And God spake all these words, saying, I, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Now, let's think about this. Are Egyptians God's chosen people? Of course they're not. How? Because the Most High was delivering the children of Israel from where? Egypt. Oh, 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 oh boy. You know what? I'm going to show you another scripture. But let's read verse 2 first. I am the Lord thy God which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other God, Elohim, before me. You No, you can't be worshiping Caesar Borgia. You can't. You can't be worshiping the white Jesus. White Jesus is a demon. It's a demon of, the, of Christianity. It's a Christian demon. By the way, let me throw something out at you. The Mashiach... When the Mashiach was born over there in Bethlehem, guess what? Christmas was already existing. They were already celebrating Christmas, y'all. They were already celebrating December 25th, way before the Mashiach, who we ignorantly call Jesus, was even born. <laughs> Christian Christmas has nothing to do. The real meaning of Christmas is who we ignorantly call Jesus. No, he's not the meaning of Christmas. The Mashiach is not the real meaning of Christmas. He wasn't born December 25th. He's not a Caucasian. He's not. See, they're saying that Serapis is Christ and Christ is Serapis. Serapis is where Christmas comes from. It's phony, y'all. Adventist. You you got you got the president of a, a Oak Wood University sitting up with a sitting next to a Christmas tree in his house. That's Serapis worship. I want to give you another scripture. Let's go to, let's go to, I want to say Exodus chapter four. Let's look at that. I, 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 I sense in my spirit, in my memory, that there's a scripture that I want to bring out. I'm not really sure what the scriptures say, but Exodus chapter four, I want to say, let's see here. Let's look for this. Exodus chapter four. And let's see here. Oh, Exodus 4.23. And I say unto thee, let my son go, that he may serve me. And if thou refuse to let him go, behold, I will slay thy sons, even thy firstborn. Did you know that Israel is the firstborn of the Most High? Look at it. Look at that, y'all. Now, now, this scripture doesn't say it, but there's a scripture that I can't recall right now that says that Israel is the firstborn, his only begotten. Did you know that? The nation of Israel is his, it's the top nation. Now, we already read Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. Let's go to Deuteronomy. Oh, I'm going to tell you, Christian. Christians hate the Bible. Why? They hate Israel. Especially the people that represent Israel, which are the blacks that were who, who were the descendants of slaves. They are the real, they are the tribe of Judah. Top tribe. There's 12 tribes, and Judah is the top tribe. Woo! Look at this. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. 
Let's go to Deuteronomy 7 6. I want to show you this. I want this to be short. Deuteronomy chapter 7 6. Because most 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 Christians, Adventists, and Sunday keepers, they don't have time to be studying no Bible. So you gotta make us you gotta make a, a video that's real quick because we pretty much have the attention span of a gnat. Okay? We got I mean, we're not interested in salvation. We're interested in 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 in, in Caesar Borgia, which is the white the real name of the white white Jesus is Caesar Borgia. B O R G I A C E A S A R E Caesar Borgia. Okay? That's the real God of Christianity. That's why his face is all over in every magazine, every publication, tracks, and all this kind of stuff. He's the real God of Christianity. It's just another version of Serapis. That's all it is, y'all. Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. Look at this. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. He said, Thou. Who is thou? Israel. Thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above. It don't say equal with all people that's on the face. It says above all people that are upon the face of the earth. We, the children of Israel are above all nations that are upon the face of the earth. Now, let's look at another scripture. I think Psalms 135 verse, I'm going to say Psalms 135 verse 4, maybe. Let's look at this. Psalms 135 verse, mm, is it Psalms 135 or 134? Okay, I think it's Psalms 135. Oh, Psalm 135 is what I'm saying, but I'm looking somewhere else. Verse 4. Psalms 135, verse 4. Look what it says. For thou, for the Lord have chosen thee, Jacob. You, you heard that? Jacob. What 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 did Jacob's name get changed to? Israel. For thou are, are chosen, for, for the Lord thy Lord have chosen Jacob unto himself. And Israel for his peculiar treasure. See, you can't become a peculiar treasure to God by becoming a Christian. No, that's nowhere in the Bible. A peculiar people. Christians are not peculiar as it relates to, I'm qualifying this, as it relates to Israel. They can't. They are the antithesis of the type of peculiar treasure that Israel is. See, Israel is a peculiar treasure unto the most high. Ahiah, the one who said in Exodus chapter 3, I am that I am. Christianity is a peculiar treasure to the God Serapis, represented by the most popular face in the world, and nobody even knows what the real name of the face is, it's Caesar Borgia. And we call him Jesus. That's it. See, there are two peculiar treasures. One to the Most High, the God of Israel, and one to the God Serapis. Most Christians are Serapis worshipers. Christianity, that's what Christianity is. It is Serapis worship. Okay? Originated by a guy who the Egyptians made into a god named Ptolemy. One of the generals of Alexander the Great. A Greek. You see? So, uh, another scripture I wanted to look at. Uh, Exodus 19. Let's go to Exodus 19. Let's go to Exodus 19. We are the peculiar treasure, y'all. Exodus 19, verse 5. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above, not equal. See, the reason as long as long as so-called African-Americans are, are, are fighting for equal rights, the most high is saying, 
I'm going to make sure that you stay in slavery. I want to make sure that you become field and stay in the position of field and house slaves. As long as you. That's why the civil rights movement was a colossal failure. It was a colossal failure. You say, well, how, in what context was it a colossal failure? It's a colossal failure in the context, a concept of not what we want. What we want is perversion in Christianity, but in, in, in respect of what the most high has in store for us, it's a colossal failure. See, we are supposed to be a nation of priests and kings over the world, and they supposed to worship God up under us. It's in the Bible. <laughs> it's in the Bible. You don't believe me? Okay, let's go to Amos chapter 3 verse 2. Let's go to Amos chapter three, verse two. You, you, you know what I mean? I mean, I mean, Christians are not going to believe anything from the Bible. <laughs> I mean, if, especially if you don't look like they pastor, and especially if you don't look like where you get that from. Uh, I can't, I was the sea. And especially if you don't look like uh, Caesar Borgia. If you're not a white person with long, straight hair and blue eyes, I mean, most most African, so-called African Americans, they ain't going to believe nothing you say. White supremacy is their God. That's all Serapis worship is, is white supremacy and slavery, mental slavery. Let's look at uh, Amos chapter 3. And let's look at verse 1 and 2. Okay, hold on a second. Amos is a small book. Amos chapter 3, verse, uh, let's look at 2. Let's look at 1, 2, and 3. Hear this word that the Lord has spoken against you, O children of Israel. Is he speaking this word against anybody else? No. This is a peculiar word, a particular word that he's speaking against who? His chosen people that are supposed to be above all people on the face of the earth. Equal rights is a curse to Israelites. Look what equal... I want to tell you what equal rights did. Equal rights set us up, set us up for having other people come into our community, setting up businesses, and we don't even have any. Hair shop, barbecue shops, churches. Hair shop, barbecue shops, churches, liquor stores. Hair shop, barbecue. Come on! <laughs> I'm sick of that already. Chicken shacks, barbecue shacks, liquor stores, churches. And, and, and corner stores with, with Arabs in it. Come on, y'all. That's what that's what equal rights. Is. See, anytime that anytime that Israel, anytime the chosen people, which are the the so-called African Americans, anytime they argue for equal rights, you know what the Most High in Heaven is saying? Okay, I'm going to make sure you are under everybody. Because I want you to be above them, not equal with them. I didn't create you. He said, my word shall stand forever and shall not come back void. So anytime we argue for equal rights, anytime we want to be equal on equal footing with other people of other nations, God said, okay, I'm going to make you the butthole of everything. Excuse my expression. You only, and that's what we are. You only have I know. Look at our church. Anything we have, it's the bottom of everything. I don't care how much money is in it. It's the bottom. It's the it's bottom feeder city. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. He only knows us. How does he know us? He knows us as the people that he has designated to be the top people. Top families on the earth he only knows us as the people that he delivered his laws commandments statutes ordinance to you don't believe me let's go to Romans 9 4 let's go to Romans 9 4 Romans 9 4 
I say that, let's look, look, start at verse 1. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost, that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. Well, I wonder why. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Christ for my brethren, for my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now this is Paul talking about he has a zeal for things of the flesh. People that are of the flesh. Mm. Mm. Who are Israelites? Verse 4. Oh, oh, oh. I, thought, I thought Paul was converted. Why does he uh, have a yearning and zeal and desire for things of the flesh? Because there's a context of this flesh. It's the flesh of all Israelites who are born again. That's the context, people. That's the only way you can look at this text. Who are Israelites? To whom? I wonder what belongs to Israelites. Let's see. Because Christians say all the things I'm about to read belong to them. Let's see. To, who are Israelites? It, notice it don't say Christians. To whom be, pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants S on the end that means old and new covenant applied to who? Israel and the giving of the law and the services of God should no other nation be running and officiating in the services of God that are not Israelites y'all oh no that's an abomination when it comes to these things in particular we are above all nations you shouldn't have no black people that are descendants of slaves and are Israelites having a white pastor no, it wasn't given to them find one place in the Bible where it was given to, for, for another nation to be priest over Israel in the most holy place and in the holy place in the outer court anywhere Show me one place. Who are Israelites to whom pertain the adoption belongs to us? To who? Israelites, not Christians. The glory belongs to us. The covenants belong to us. The law belongs to us. The services of God belong to us. And all the promises in the Bible belong to us. All of them. 2 Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, who is my people? My people are Israelites. If my people who are called by my name would humble themselves. This is not talking about no, the people that enslaved us. This is not talking about them. The people that enslaved us and we made them our God. And start praying to them. No. See? It was something, another scripture that came to my head. But I don't want this... this to be long. People, we're going to have to love Israelites. There are groups out there, there's a lot of Hebrew Israelites that's getting it twisted. They're getting it twisted. We, The reason why the Most High set Israel up as the top nation because he favored them above all nations that upon the face of the earth. He said he didn't pick us because we were the greatest in number. Oh, boy, I think that's what? Exodus 25, 25. But I'm not going to, if I read that scripture, I guarantee you another scripture going to pop in my head and then it's going to go to a whole nother level. You know, I know that we have the attention span of a gnat when it comes to biblical things. I know that. That's why we don't read our Bible. That's why we don't pray. And we don't even know what to pray for. We need to pray for Israel, the promises that were given to Israel, the covenants that were given to Israel, the law, the glory that was given to Israel, the ordinances, the blessings. And we need to be praying about the curses that the Most High had given to Israel. I mean, if, if you go over to Genesis chapter 25, boy, I want to go there so bad, but I'm going to stop right here. See, Oh, another thing I have to do in this Sabbath school lesson. Now, you might say, oh, he really didn't deal with the Sabbath school lesson. Yes, I did. Let's go down. I, you know I got to do this. I always got to go to the end of the Sabbath school lesson. 
Because the foundation of the, Abbas, the Sab School lesson is this white guy here. I'm pointing at right here. I got my pointing finger on. Caesar Borgia. Uh, uh, another version is Caesar Borgia, which is Serapis Worship 2.0. Okay? That's all it is. Or 3.0. White Jesus is a symbol of the of Satan. White Jesus is a symbol of the mark of the beast. So whenever you see this at the end of the Sabbath school lesson, that means th th these are the credits. Just like you have credits at the end of a movie, well, they put in the credits at the end of it. The, the credit goes to a false god. You see, Caesar Borgia. That's all Sunday school and Sabbath school lessons are about. Caesar Borgia. Serapis worship 2.0. That's all it is, y'all. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I See, I want to go there now. Now I want to go there. Sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. They showing that this white guy, he's the mark of the beast. The Bible says it's the number of a man. Serapis. A man, a human being. Who are the human beings? The human. Who is the man? The man is the group of human beings that are pushing this image. That's the man we're talking about. And let me tell you something else. In closing, the Most High is never, ever going to use Roman numerals to add up nothing. <laughs> He's not a Roman, y'all. Serapis is the one that's giving us the vicarious filii day. The Lord don't speak Latin. He's a, the Lord speaks Hebrew. He's the Hebrew king of the Hebrews. Vicarious filii day. That's some garbage. God is going to speak. God is going to use Latin. Roman numerals to add stuff up. Come on, y'all. You don't see God, the most high using Roman numerals nowhere. I forget what the numbers for uh, beginning and end are in the Hebrew. I forget what the numbers are. I'm just learning this. about, But it's not Alpha and Omega, y'all. That's Romanism. That's paganism. That's witchcraft, sorcery, Serapis worship. Get away from that garbage. Egyptian Egyptology and, and black magic. Come on, get away from all that garbage. But anyway, I'm going to stop right there. These things we ask in the name of Ahia, Asha, Ahia, which means in the English, I am that I am. Ahia. You guys take it easy and have a beautiful Sabbath. I'm out.